Hello, design students. Shahin is here. Uh, this week, uh, we have our first computer lab colliding with the Anzac Day. So I'm recording this demonstration to help people um, follow the uh, trainings and <clears throat> know about the assessments. So here, um, this week, we don't have any assessment, there is no quiz, but still, um, this is the best time for you to uh, make sure you will finish your first, second, third assessment task. In case if you haven't done any of those or you miss them, you can um, ask for an extension. So that is uh, first to let you know that we don't have any quiz, but, but these assessment tasks, they are very critical for uh, completing your skills with um, 3D modeling and utilizing that in an innovative design. So here I've got two videos for you in case if you still don't know how to make PDF from your drawing. So make sure you watch them, but these two are different. You can create a 3D PDF or you can create a 2D PDF. For assessment purposes, you only need 2D um, PDFs. These are what you generate from your drawing. And that is in 90% of the cases, that is all you need. But what is a 3D PDF? Imagine that you want to show someone your 3D design. They don't have SOLIDWORKS. So SOLIDWORKS has the capability you can create a 3D PDF. You send it to the people without the SOLIDWORKS and still they are able to open the 3D file, rotate it, zoom, and somehow to measure, but you can they cannot modify it. So this is just for your general understanding, the 3D PDF, how to create them. But this last one, that is critical to show you how to, you go from the 2D space to the 3, um, from 3D space when, when you have completed your part. So you want to send that to someone for manufacturing that requires to have the dimension. We never add dimension in the 3D view. Dimensions are uh, on a standard basis are added to the 2D drawing and then make sure you watch this video for that. Okay, having said that, let's go back to the computer lab. I uh, give you an outline of what we do um, this week. First, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to demonstrate an animation of your project assembly. So um, I told you that a great way of communicating your design with someone is to show them the exploded view of the 3D um, product. And that can be used for repairing purposes, that can be used for um, maintenance, even something like a IKEA, people want to know how to put the parts together. An exploded view uh, is a great way of making that. Exploded view is a drawing, that's an illustration. But you can make an animation of the exploded view that is most useful for a presentation when you want to present your week 11 uh, project. It's a great idea to generate a 3D animation of your product, your uh, the subject of the design, how this is composed of the parts, how the parts are related together. I show you that as the first uh, thing today. And then we know that how important bill of materials are. So bill of materials will be used by many people in the uh, company, your company. So people in the logistics, they want to know what are the consumer, consumable parts, where are the vendors, how often they need to be replaced. So they have to make an order before things are um, broken. And also someone in the sales department, someone in the uh, other department, they want to order the long lead items. So by looking at the bill of material, they can do that. Most importantly, uh, you remember that in the third reflective piece, the reason you did the echo audit using the bill of material from the textbook. That was because your bill of material was not ready then. So today 
we want to make sure we are able to extract a bill of material from a existing 3D assembly. So you would do that for your own design, for your own project. And based on that bill of material, you will be performing an eco audit to um, generate, um, to do all sorts of analysis, what if analysis, choice, of change of material, see how that impacts the carbon footprint, the energy footprint, and all that. All right, the next thing is, um, yes, that bill of material, I show you uh, an example of from a 3D assembly you haven't seen before, how to add material, how to add information, and how to fetch those information into the bill of material. All right, so I think that that's um, enough for the outlining today's activities. So what I'm going to show you today is that is a jig assembly. So a jig assembly is in the woodwork, sometime you have to make a drill at an angle. So this drill would let the wooden parts to be uh, fitted easily together just simply using a um, simple screw. But but that hole which is guiding the screw, it has to be precise. It has to be at an angle. And this jig is making sure that when you do that quickly, you don't have enough time to do the measurements. So yeah, that, that helps you to make that drill and properly. And this is a two-step drill, one of them for guiding the drill. The second one is for um, the chamfering the hole such that the screw is dug under the surface, it's not projecting out. So make sure you watch uh, some, some videos of how this great technique is used. And then that, uh, this is a special design, great design that is to adjust the thickness of the wood because you want to make a drill on woods of different thickness so that that slider would let this one to move and accommodate um, uh, planks or timbers of different thickness. So that angle is fixed or if you want to change it, I believe that screw here is a lucky screw it helps you to replace the drill jig. By changing the drill jig, you would be able to make it uh, different drills of different size. So here you've got one item, which is the drill itself. That's a step drill. And that is making a um, chamfer and guiding of the drill at the same time. So this bush is to simply adjust the depth, how, how deep you want the drill to be. And these locking knots are to let that slider to uh, move. And then that is for the function of um, adjustability. So these faces here are making sure that during the adjustment, this um, guide is not going to rotate. It only moves in one direction. and yeah, that is uh, more or less all the information. But if I want to generate a bill of material, how do I make a bill of material? That's the most critical things we do that first. Well, bill of material is getting its required information from the parts. So if my parts here, for example, that drill, if this drill I can see that um, that drill is here. And when I look at the tree, there is no material associated to that. So there are some information you provide them during the design. So those information are used later on by the bill of material. And then bill of material is not a manual operation. You don't add information by typing it inside. The, the information has to be attached to the part, there are the um, library of the part. And then this uh, is telling me that this design is not complete because when I look at here, 
there is no material specified. So how can I fix this before I go for bill of material? First, let's make this one editable. I'm making this one editable. Now you think the color change into blue. It means I'm now able to add any information I want here. The first thing, I wanna make sure this one has a material associated to it. Let's make this one, for example, um, out of some tool of steel. Um, okay, I'm making this out of um, 4340. Now you see the material has changed, but that is just a part of adding information. Generally speaking, once you finish with um, making a 3D part, what you do is you go to the file, and here is an option called properties. In that property, you have a couple of tabs. The first one is a summary, it's blank, nothing is there. Custom, nothing is there, it's blank. Configuration specific, that is blank, nothing is there. So let's try custom. So here, these are the type of things I want to include um, in my bill of material. The first thing, you see this is a pull down menu. I would choose, for example, um, with a configuration specific. So let's go to the configuration specific. And here I can have <clears throat> let's add, for example, material. And this is the type of um, text, so here I add AISI 4330. Okay, so because this is text, exactly that appears like so. If the second one is something like um, All right, so here I managed to um, modify the part. So let's close that. And remember, what was the name of this part? This is called Parantera. What happens if I save this assembly? Okay, now instead of opening the assembly, I want to open the part itself. So let me go and find where the file is. Um, so here I'm changing the filter to the parts. And maybe this is a step file. So let's see. So the thing is, you can only um, modify the information for files which are generated as a part. If they are as a solid, uh, as a step file or as an assembly or other type of standard 3D, SolidWorks cannot add information to them. So here we only got few parts. Let's just try, for example, um, I'm going for this one. Let's see what, what part that is. Okay, so this is a spring, and this spring doesn't have any material associated to it. Let's uh, make this, for example, out of stainless steel. Apply, close. Now this is made of a stainless steel. 
if I go to the file properties, yeah. So now here you can add the material descriptions. So you add as many um, information you want to include in the bill of material, and they would appear inside your uh, bill of material. So with this specific assembly, maybe I use that to show you how to make animation of the exploded part, and then I use another assembly for creating bill of material. So this assembly is not appropriate for um, bill of material because the parts are not uh, native. They are not native. All of the parts, the key parts, are not native to the solid world. So I would use another assembly for this demonstration. But now, just for the sake of um, animation movement, uh, what you need is OK, so this is my assembly. And I want to create a animated exploded video from this one. So first thing, I go to Insert and here, Exploded View. So you want to insert an exploded view. So what does that mean? When you start Exploded View, it asks you select view um, component, not assembly. So here, I have a blank exploded view. I need to choose in the order of how do they are assembled, disassembled. For example, I choose this one and holding the shift and this one. Now, this type of explosion is called, uh, we want them to separate in two directions. And if I drag that one, you see both items are separated in the opposite direction. This is because I chose the second type of exploder. So once I added this step, I need to uh, select done. Now it is waiting for me to dictate the next step. The next step is I want to um, disassemble this one. So let's select this one. But that is from the first type of assembly. This is true just for one part, I'm dragging this one this way. All right, so done. The next would be, I need to remove that ring. So let me grab this ring. And that I'm holding, bringing, or maybe just I select these together with the bolt together, holding the shift. So both of them are selected now. But you see that this axis is not um, coaxial with it here. Um, OK, so here I'm just bringing this one out. Done. The next step, this bush, I want that to be uh, taken out, selecting this one. And that I'm dragging in this direction, done. And what else? Maybe you want to remove that one as well. On. And finally, the drill. Um, you do this one movement, maybe like so. Done. The second one done. I mean, this is just for demonstration purposes. It's not necessarily correct. Um, all right. I managed to add a number of explosion step here. So next thing I do is to confirm that this is the disassembly process I wanted. So here, that is approved. Now. 
in my design tree, if I go and say collapse, collapse would bring them back to where they were. And if I right click and say explode, so that would explode them. So if you want to generate an animated video from this one, all you have to do in, in here, in the toolbar, you have something for recording. Okay, you see that one? If I play, what happened? So um, I go to my design tree, right click and say animate collapse. Animate collapse, that's the option you have to choose. So here you get a animation sequence, you see? So that animation can be recorded. So the way you record this is by simply go to save. And here I decide to record this as a, a MP4 format. So you can adjust the frame per second, the speed, and all the settings you can set before you go to save. And when I save, this video is recorded as an MP4. And then that MP4 could easily be included in your um, PowerPoint presentation in week 11. Or in future, you want to impress a employer with a sophisticated presentation. So that is how you generate an animated video. So other way of doing that is imagine in the beginning, I was trying to explain that, that video to you. So I don't want to record the exploded wheel. So I want to make a customized video. This is also easy. So let me close that item here. And I just want to record my screen on SolidWorks as I explained. So that is also easy. Here you have a toolbar. Once you click that toolbar, so the content of the what you do next, it will be recorded as, for example, MP4, and that is saved here. So let me save that. And I give this a new name. Okay, so let me say. And now that is my record is being, my, my screen is being recorded. Whatever I do, that would be a part of the recording. So once I've finished with um, everything I wanted to show, all you have to do is to stop recording. So once you stop recording, um, now your video is being generated. So let me show you what we just recorded here. Um, that is the, the video recording of the exploded view. So that is independent. Even if you don't have SolidWorks, this video can easily be integrated in your um, presentation. That is one. Also, if you want to record the screen. Um, I think what you do is, let's try record, yeah, record video that is the tool, toolbar. All right, I believe now my screen is being um, recorded. 
my computer is not um, terribly powerful, so you don't see the rendering to happen smoothly, but that is fine, just, just for demonstration purposes. Whenever I finished, um, So let's see if the recording, um, all right. So these are two different functions. One is for recording the screen as you go. The second one is to make an animation from um, the screen as you go. All right, let's try one more time. Mm, here in that toolbar, I have All right, the next um, exercise is related to the bill of material. I want to show you how bill of material can be generated. And for that, I'm going to make a fresh, um, if I go to your, um, design folio, and let's go to task three. And let's try, for example, plumber assembly. Um, so in this subdirectory, let me open the assembly file and change. Here with the hook assembly, for example. So this is a very simple assembly, and we want to generate a bill of material for that. How this can be done? One, two, three, four, five items. And let's try to see if, if materials have material associated. Not, no information is added to the hook, and no information is associated to the pulley. So this is something like a blank. It all only has the geometrical information in it and no information usable for bill of material. So that's a good example. Um, what I do is at the part level, I try to add this information. Okay, so let's just remember what the name of the parts are. Pulley, bracket, this is a M42 bolt, and this is a cutter, uh, cutter pin. So one, two, three, four, and hook. So these are the items we have. So I go and open them one by one. So let's open just the parts. So this is first part and bracket hook and not fully so let's open these files <clears throat> and we take them one by one starting for example with the All right, starting with the let me see which one we need for this assembly. Okay, this is relevant, that is relevant. This is all 
also related to the assembly. And that one is related to the assembly. And this one is related. OK. We start with the bracket. So first thing is to assign the material. And let's choose um, steel hot roll. Close. And now I go to the file and properties. 